Hai, you're watching Ruang Bertamu Again dengan saya, Z Spooky dan hari ini kita ada beberapa guest istimewa bermula dengan on my left, Jan Thompson everyone. Yeah. Hey, so, oh, okay. oh, okay. On my right ni ada tiga tauke besar. Tauke? Oh, tauke. Tauke. Okay. 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 Kita yeah. okay. Businessman okay. Tauke, okay. Lah. First one, Tauke Weekend Sessions, Fikri. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yang kat tengah ni, is Tauke Tapau TV. Yeah. Aku dia ikan dia sendiri. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yang terakhir adalah Tau K Tinker Studios. Known yeah. for his work is Correct Physical. Dan yang paling hujung sekali adalah Abang Big. Yes. Dia yes. ada yes. show di sini, Big. You're in a record store. And at the back there is a locked box. You find the key to that box and you open it. What is the album in that box? Let's start with Jen. Does it have to start with me? Ladies first. Ladies first. Think about it. Ladies first. What is in that box? In that box is Sudiman's album. Yeah, that's that's good memories. Damn, damn, damn. Okay. Let's do this. Achi, dia jawab dulu. Dia buat jawapan tu je. Don't want to cool you out. Next is you. Oh, maybe uh, 12 inch of air mata di Kuala Lumpur, Piramli. Okay. Next. Aku rasa untuk aku maybe uh, Seven Color punya Drones punya album tapi in vinyl lah because it's my favorite album Ooh, and it's vinyl, not lah. out in vinyl. <laughs> so aku macam it's a magic thing kalau kau buka kalau ada benda tu memang aku rasa magic lah. Oh, kau mesti ada banyak jawapan. Tak ada lah. My box will be empty. Ha? Huh? Sebab semua kau dah ada dah? Bukan. <laughs> Ada apa dia? <laughs> empty. Ada apa? Kosong. Empty or... No because to me lah macam whatever I discovered right I don't think it should be macam ni lah. Uh, It should it should be kept, it should be shared, and then it should be like macam I, because I'm the type yang aku tak latch, you know, aku tak ada sentimental tu sangat sebab to me the moment I feel lah ni aku kan kalau the moment you start being sentimental, kau start to nak progression tu kau macam tu lah. That's me ya. Oh, okay, uh, okay, I understand. Yeah. Pandai kita it's, semua pergi this way dia pergi this way dia. Ada lah, ada tu. It's baggage lah, baggage. Okay. Uh, yeah. Bukan baggage, she's not baggage. She's like macam it has always been the principle. Uh, dalam benda yang aku buat meaning i don't like macam apa yang aku dah achieve hari ni or apa benda yang aku suka hari ni i mean like okay time to Settle. move on to the next oh, thing okay, lah okay, okay. Uh, keep on moving lah maksudnya for, for at least fans dia tak dapat jawapan lagi lah so aku kan cuba korek lagi eh sangat aku korek tadi pandai pandai dia macam tak dapat jawapan dia gerak sana okay 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 pandai well for me personally it would be seputuras kios ad sebab that kind of jumped me to be uh, the metal hit that I am today. So, itu personal lah. And also, if bagi another album is Metallica's uh, Black Album. So, these two album got me into where I am, where I think you kenal I, the moshing or all the madness I buat dekat gig kan. So, because of these two albums lah. What's your favourite track lah, Chaos AD? Uh, Chaos AD is Refuse, Resist and uh, Territory. Yeah. When was that moment yang kau rasa shit? Aku nak pursue music in whatever form ke ini media ke ataupun playing. Let's start with Jen. Eh, Jen ni. I think that time was when I listened to to local music on the radio. I was probably five years old or six years old, and local music was was heavily played on the radio. And it didn't matter whether you uh, what race, religion. You were. It was just played on the radio, and I would just sing along with all the songs, and and it really drew me in. And that that base, that foundation, really made me who I am today. That local music supporter, because I've seen the glory years, and and that really really stays with me all my life. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, ten marks. Pulau Merkam. Dalam tu, dalam tu. That's good, that's good. Thank you so much. Okay, so next. Ah, what was it again? My experience that got me, got me turning point. Turning point. I think I was 12 years old then. At that time, a lot of people played guitar. Try ayat awet ke apa. So I picked up the guitar and then somehow I ended up in a band. So the moment I realized that okay, music is for me is when we played Panggung Anniversary when we were twelve. So there was a small. Twelve years old, my Panggung Anniversary. Ah, so so we were quite. Level, sure. This was Ideal's way. Yeah, yeah, with Ideal's way. So Ideal became like an actor. So that was my experience. 
that got me into music. Not, not so much of the music itself, but the experience playing. That got me into like, oh, wow, this is a different perspective. Huh? Good. Yeah. All right. So, where's... Oh, down uh, I think for, for me, um, I've, I mean, I went to gigs. Like, I, I travel all over when I grew up. So, tak sempat lah macam betul-betul discover local scene and stuff like that. Only after SPM was the point that, okay, I actually went to a gig. But I never got into like, you know, this is going to be my the rest of my life. It's just basically going to see gigs and having fun. Uh, but after I habis belajar, um, I did internship doing a show called The Hoppers and Ali Music. Uh, so it's basically like a bunch of guys traveling in a uh, apa nama dia, uh, Volkswagen combi and we travel around Malaysia to discover everything that's cool to do with the local independent scene. So I did the, the content research for that and I was one of the talent. So throughout that experience, I discovered like, gila lah Malaysia ni sebenarnya. Like it's not just music. The local independent scene has a lot of different things. But knowing that in every state, there is a band that's really, really that good, you know. But after I did Hopper Sun Music, I actually tak terfikir, okay, that I'm done with that. Um, I've done the fun stuff. After that, I worked at Astro Awani for a while, doing um, kind of... You were an anchor, kan? Right? I was an anchor. Yeah, morning anchor. show. Lagi <laughs> <laughs> tu lah. Macam aku buat morning show, segala benda. And... Only after kau dah tak buat benda-benda yang yang to do with independent scene, you start producing for other people. I was working at a basically a current affairs kind of news kind of channel that I realized that, you know what, I don't see a lot of stuff to do with the local independent scene on TV. Like at that point in time, it was Kenny Fantasia 1, 2, 3, 4, after that diulang-ulang, these reality shows and stuff like that. And I figured like, macam, eh, sayangnya. Tak ada apa-apa to do with... I mean, there's so much talents out there. There's so much stories out there that's not being told. So that's when I decided, you know what? I'm going to quit my day job. You know, this is something that I'm very passionate about. So that was probably 11 or 12 years ago. So it, now I'm here lah. Uh, so it's basically hoppers can like... Later on, after I did um, kerja kat Astro Boy, I realised macam, eh, sayangnya tak ada benda-benda macam ni. Bila, while I was doing it, the first time, like, macam, you know, I didn't know. So, that I was the turning point lah. Yeah. So, it was like, okay, lah. Okay lah. This is the thing that I want to do. Ah, whoosh. Panjang cerita ni. Uh, I mean, like, I, I, I grew up exposed to music sebab my dad used to play in a band. Tak ada band apa pun. So, memang dari kecil dah dengar music. But the turning point tu, I would say, like, macam, the uh, masa, I think, uh, 89 macam tu, where macam tu, I, I uh, it was Grind Crusher punya compilation. <coughs> so death metal, masa tu. So that was the thing yang macam, because I felt like macam, okay, I found something yang macam I can relate to. And then something yang macam, somewhat gave me like, macam, okay, there's, there is a purpose. So that was it. But uh, the thing that made me want to do what, until apa yang buat hari ni, is, uh, uh, it's not music sebenarnya, it's a fanzine. It's a fanzine by this guy called Wang and Lee, formerly of Pil Pilgrims. Uh, biodegradable material. So that was the thing that made me want to, eh, hey, I want to start documenting stuff. So documenting stuff ni, that's from either tak kira, whichever platform, it's all about that. So my passion in music is channel into like documenting things that I like so that I can share with other people. So yeah, so kalau the turning point yang bagi rasa punya tu is Grand Crusher. I, in specific punya tu, Grand Crusher punya compilation. Yeah. I started off technically, yelah, dulu dengar search apa semua, masa growing up. But they yang buat dia jadi macam you, kalau in the 70s, people found it in punk. But to me, I found it in death metal music lah, masa tu. Tahun yeah. berapa tu lah? Umur kau berapa tu? 89, I was uh, 89 form 1. 89, aku umur 3 tahun. Fuh, kau ajar. Kau ajar. Itu lah punya. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. Tak wonder kan? Kau nak pergi sembilan. But it's a good story. I think time two fanzines were much the mediums where people know the bands. Yeah, but biodegradable material is different because dulu ada banyak fanzine yang pasal music je. I mean like, I mean, uh, kita ada kalau zaman awal-awal dulu, we had like Adis, we had Parasite. Banyak ah, Tapi, 
biodegradable material ni dia dia discuss about life about the scene it's more serious stuff things yang macam yang macam encourage you to okay music is music fine but what are you how are you giving oh. back so that was the thing yang macam oh okay betul lah kan so i mean bukan dia orang yang lain tu salah yang lain dia just focus on music i mean like kalau sekarang ni macam uh, uh, dia panggil apa uh, promotional punya mm-hmm. point of music whereas biodegradable ni dia encourage macam okay um, how you giving back to the scene are you paying for gigs i mean like okay why why you need to do this it's more like asking questions in order for you to berfikir lebih lanjut apa semua so that was the thing macam okay i need to start doing something Mr. Big. Well, for me, um, this year is my 10th year MCing. So the exact date was uh, 7th May 2010. Yes. Seven. Shai Hulud Live in Kuala Lumpur in one cafe. Oosh. It was uh, organized by the four horsemen from JB. So Abang Haris of Wicked Delirium just, just gave me a tag. Big Hang naik atas. I still remember the Hang naik. Asyik untuk apa ni bang? Hang MC. But before that one, I was always going to gigs weekend week out. I started macam you juga uh, growing up in Subang having listening to extreme music my time orang tengok pelik because it was hip hop and skate at that moment my time so um, at the moment where they think metal is always metallica saja I showed them what like what's beyond metallica semua terkejut so kat Subang tak ada gig tak ada apa habis SPF pergi college I was exposed to my first gig King Studio That's where I saw the first evolution of uh, Strange, where they were still heavy back then, with the late L Dub at bass. So grind on, sampai 7th May itu. Just thrown into it. Use my skill talking to people on stage. And Alhamdulillah has brought me to where I am today. And expanded from music to weddings, corporates and whatnot. And Alhamdulillah from there, I have my team from High Castle who believed in me saying that you got the tools, but You, uh, we can supply you the production. So Alhamdulillah, with the big talk, it's already the 22nd episode and we're all about educating, not discriminate. So all I talk is based on real life experience daripada gig sendiri. So when people people bash pasal mosh, it's actually a small thing. Kalau you tahu ethics, eh, actually it's easy. It's not about just whacking people or lari. <laughs> lang- like, kereta langgar lari kan? Ah. Dalam mosh, you tumbuk lari. Too basic lah. But I'm here to tell you, it's okay kalau terkena if you got a two-way communication yang you boleh cakap, I'm sorry, take my hand, angkat bangun. Simple as that. So, I'm thankful to where I am right now. But that turning point was that 7th May 2010. One Cafe will always remain a place for me where I stage die for the first time. So, a lot of memories Apa there. Apa ramai tolong angkat weh? Takkan tolong angkat. Tujuh orang flat bila I landing. So, <laughs> let's just stop there. Yeah. Okay, but since we're okay, since we're talking about what happened 10 years ago, I think the scene was a lot different 10 years ago than it is today. Um, in a lot of ways, lah, macam even social media pun lain back then. How we consume music pun, aku rasa time tu Spotify tak was, was it still? no no, no. Tak, no. Tak, tak no. Tak exploration tak yeah. was it was a bit different, right? Yeah. Time tu sama sama. My space, eh? Yeah, my space. Yeah, my space. No, 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 no Yeah. Uh, talking about yeah, like I said, 10 years ago and some things were different. Much um, I think <laughs> all of you were very heavily involved in the scene, and so are you guys now. So, apa beza scene 10 years ago dengan scene sekarang? Jen looks like she yeah. wants. To... No. no? <laughs> hey. Excuse, Excuse me. Excuse me. Look, looks like a lot of things going on that mind, okay, Jen. <laughs> Yeah, I was hoping for th- more like 30 years ago, not 10 years ago. <laughs> oh, like 10 yeah, years ago, I like, we start, we start then. You live the set life 30 years ago. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like the question is too, they're terlalu subjective. So, yeah. to me, logically, it should be good. It should be better. It should yeah. be, right? Yeah. But what, what, why are people saying that, much like, oh, since Karan not like the the glory days or some shit like that? Oh, well, but why that's, is it that? that's, is it that's, that's, that's just nostalgia talking. Like. Yeah, I think nostalgia a lot of people, talking. Yeah. Glory a lot of people, days are always nostalgia. Dude, I prefer the ding dang days, you know, tunggu roti mama datang. Oh, best though, those no, days. but that's that's no longer <laughs> to personal uh, preference, uh, ah, right? Personal yeah. preference, yeah. But I, I think true. in terms of infrastructure, the sea nowadays have it better. Obviously, the internet has done so much. Oh yes, for everyone. Yes, but yes. as as an infrastructure, uh, content wise, susah sikit lah nak cakap. The way that I feel like, especially after the internet, I feel like people are 
much more easier to connect with each other. It's much more easy for you to discover. But at the same time, it kinds of it's. I kind of feel like the the whole community thing is not the same anymore. Because dulu macam the way that people connect is by like oh kawan or member and stuff like that. Now how you discover music is no longer. I don't think it, I, I think people still discover music through friends and stuff like that. But with things such as Spotify and stuff mm-hmm. like that, it just changes things a bit. But I feel like macam. I mean, it's hard to say whether it's. I don't think you could say it's better There's, or it's yeah, worse. Yeah, I don't uh. think there is a, such a thing as better or worse or easier or not easier. I think every generation had its own problems. Yes. Uh, sure. And Agreed. and every generation has an easier way to go, but yeah. it's all about your individual mindset and how oh, you yes. go forward as a musician or somebody involved in the business. Um, change we can never stop. It will roll you over if you decide you want to stop. So you just have to keep on going with with the scene. But much um back in the day, I feel that much um uh it was it's not like in like in Maria. Sekarang pun Maria kan. Tapi I would say it was more it was more centralized. I don't know. Could you get you get what I mean? That's what so, so I'm saying about communities as well because like. The way that I feel about the scene now, you know, it, the whole scene started with the whole idea of DIY, right? Do it yourself. So people really do it themselves, kind of thing. But dulu dalam do it yourself tu pun, in order to push for things, you have to have friends to spread it around and stuff like that. With the current day and age, you've got every every single band has their own Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter kind of page, which means that they could like easily letak and let it automate. So I I kind of feel like much like, you know the the community part. Is is what I feel is is different, but I do feel like this year especially, you know, I think things are getting a whole lot better in that sense. Um, that's the only thing lah. Aku rasa macam because segala benda ada teknologi segala benda ni dia, it doesn't necessarily make things easier for people to get together. You see, but it's easier to get things done. It is. Um, Ten years ago, you'd be surprised to have a monitor on stage. My first experience of a monitor pl- playing, playing a show, was in Singapore. The Cat Esplanade. Macam, wish bestnya, benda ni ada monitor. Oh, ada engineer, siut, on stage. <laughs> But now, now you are, you have that. I mean, look at Bijan. <laughs> Here, you know, you get to play with a monitor. I mean, look at these guys with all these cameras. Yeah, right? it's like, kalau 10 years ago, I don't think you Susah could easily do a show like this. Susah, bro. Susah, we. Sekarang ni, actually, on a single phone, You could actually broadcast to so many more people compared to before. But the challenge now is the content. So the infrastructure dulu kalau kata, eh, aku tak ada kamera, aku tak boleh buat. Okay, now you have a camera. What do you want to do? Yeah. What do you want to say? So the question is really, I don't know. Like it's it's still agak general lah. Your your question earlier, but I think in terms of infrastructure, in terms of equipment, the scene now has it so much better. I think also education as well because <clears throat> there's so many people talking online that you can. Find out how to do music as a business yes. rather than just as a, a fun thing, which I think is what is lacking in in, in the system is always education. But is it also how people consume music these days? The latest generation consume music differently from people like us. I discover a lot of new stuff from my kid. So, much I, bila I observe them, my daughter, bila I observe how, I, <laughs> much I, I find it amusing about how. Dia dan dia punya age group discover music, right? Is of course uh, the platform is Spotify, but how they discover tu, I can see similarity on how when I was growing up discovering music. Masa tu, cuma the medium platform situation is different, and so macam I don't think the in terms of discovery tu, of course dia punya sumber tu berbeza lah compared to dulu macam maybe now macam you cakap TikTok, maybe via YouTube, all the those who stream games and stuff apa semua, <coughs> but Doesn't mean that the Romanian discovery itu tak macam zaman kita lah. Right, yeah, that's true. Uh, that's yeah, true. sebab I feel like <laughs> macam the argument how they consume tu, sama juga kalau back in the 60s, orang dengan LP and then bila cassette or the the cartridge came, people were comp, you know, orang cakap, eh, tak boleh lah, ni cartridge is not the, you know, so it's a never ending cycle. So I don't think it's something, the medium, the platform tu, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be like, apa, the defining or apa, apa <coughs> the factor yang to validate a person lah in terms of the new music discovery sebab it's a cycle it's a cycle dia tak ada beza tak ada apa cuma like macam dia shape how, and form je berubah yeah. tapi sebenarnya benda tu sama uh, it's a behavior lah it's ha. a behavior so it goes back to whether okay when, how much do you appreciate music itu je 
kalau you appreciate lebih kau dah dapat satu artis kau, of course kau kena eh dia ni siapa influencer yes, yeah. of course right yeah. so different dia macam tu je so it's not it's not the platform or the medium is how music connect to you and how you want to know more about music yeah if you ask me yeah i do i do feel like not right now like discovery when you talk about discovery music actually comes to you now this is the current generation dulu like you you search lah mm. kan? explore tapi aku mm. rasa yeah. macam sekarang dia lebih datang kepada engkau lah like, in terms of local pula macam not right now dulu aku, it's probably the same thing though i mean like cuma sekarang ni macam kau kena compete dengan bukan setakat muzik daripada negara-negara ataupun negara-negara besar saja kan. Because of the internet, because of ni, ada logiknya budak-budak ni dengar muzik daripada Iceland lah, hmm, daripada itu yeah. ni lah. Hmm. So the competition is much more bigger, the hmm. exposure is bigger. Hmm. But I do, I don't know if it's conclusive to say whether like macam a certain thing is better lah. I just yeah, think yeah. like hmm. this is a dilemma of every generation. Memang yeah. memang semua akan lain-lain lah. Yeah. I like the word dilemma. I Because discovery, kan? let's say like you say from your your kid, you found out songs from TikTok, and somehow first impression be like kita yang orang lama ni macam apa benda ni kan? Yeah. But then again, the discovery uh, further extends when this particular artist when that we think that is annoying, tapi influence dia from music that we like. Yeah. Yeah. So I like that that type of discovery, which is an eye opener for me. So I I hope that uh, this discovery thing just goes on lah. Be ada apa? Evolve because discovery is always good. Yeah. But 2010, kalau fikir 2010 sebenarnya zaman apa sebenarnya? 2010, it's actually it's post the, MySpace. It's it's towards, MySpace. Towards the end of MySpace. Is it like the OC punya time series? The OC. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's probably oh that lah. Kan? So macam <laughs> that that you then you you talk about that as well. Like you know, like the OC became such a big thing. Like yang semua orang tengok. No, I think OC was earlier lah. I think yeah. kami was 2008, 2009. Was, OC 2006, was after wasn't kami. kami. Yeah. 2006 eh? Ya, yeah, I think 2006 so. was kami. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> 2008. 2008. <laughs> I joined I joined XFM 2008. So masa tu kami dengan tua. Yeah. Ah, oh, right. I remember the Bukit Jalil show. Yeah. Aku tak aku rasa macam like betul 2010 is most probably like zaman yang macam si betul-betul baru lepas wave naik tu, dia macam po- a bit post after SH1 that lah. Stage 1 AJF 2010, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the, so that was the peak. And then after that it backslide. Nah, dia mula-mula uh, Mi Angku Hussein and then yes, Estrange yes. and then after that downhill. Bukan downhill lah, the, the cycle. Backslide lah. Like Jadi macam wave yeah. yang, I think like any way that we're seeing it, the way the scene grows is definitely like a cycle lah. Dia akan naik sekejap, dia akan turun sekali lagi kan. But it's just like benda-benda yang kita lalui tu sebenarnya benda yang sama. Hmm. Cuma medium dia lain-lain lah. Uh, but th- and that's partly the dilemma lah of how do you keep the scene always on top which I think it's almost impossible as well yeah. yeah I think to me right it's not about getting the scene on top it's how can you maintain the excitement mm. yeah you know regardless lah kalau music apa it's about maintaining it's about music to me it's about you know how how can you make a person be excited and maybe from that excitement they can trigger to trickle down into other yeah hey, i want to do something i want to contribute you know? that's why i think live music is so important because you can discover music via spotify correct but, but nothing to beats. fall in love truly to fall in love you have to watch it live the experience yep. of live music yeah once you've yeah. seen it live you fall in love and yeah. it's not just about watching the live music it's also the connections the communities that you build when you go to correct the, uh, yeah. Yeah. it's so, community correct exactly. yeah. absolutely at the end of the day i think it's that lah and i think at the end of the day right who knows I, i'm not too sure myself probably the scene has always been the same the benda yang berubah mengikut uh, all the cycle is actually perception So kadang-kadang at one point perception kita bahawa oh kita punya music tengah on top so padahal sebenarnya sama as all the way. The thing that I've realized recently is that with the scene and with the industry it has a lot to do with perception at that point in time you know. Apa the hype apa benda yang berlaku ah. Although when you when you talk about industry then you're talking about metrics. Right? There you go. Hmm. If there was like a responsible music body that would actually give out all this kind of uh, numbers, numbers. numbers. Yeah. Mm. I mean this is basic market research dude. it is it is yeah but if you can't give that that means uh, don't know lah. but but talking about it being it, it going down at a certain point of time again okay, i think master when i first you know like, uh, my music it was during that time so i do realize like, when my abang abang at the time uh, masa at the height of the indie music at the time, at the, at the time beza tau. macam the bands semua keluar we still have the same numbers the same number of bands my music maybe ada yang lebih kurang ada yang lain sikit tapi 
dia kurang apa orang datang gig kurang listeners kurang exposure so what do you, what do you think actually happened people grew up yeah it's it's it's, it's a generation your, kind your, of thing as well your audience lah. grows up so if you cannot relate to the the same audience You, you having a problem because like dia berapa tahun sebelum tu kan macam wah oh, you see yes. hit, yeah, hit, 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 yeah, that time tengah before up. 2010 MCPA tingkat atas mm. the indie memang tengah hot so when it came to 2010 and beyond macam tadi cakap lah people grew up maybe for the last 5 6 years in 2010 those people grew up yang mana kaki pergi gig 5 years straight 2010 and beyond life happened life yeah, happened yeah. 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 dah belajar yeah. dah start kerja how about the younger ones like what happened to them so like? there's always like a transitional period yeah. yang between generation tau macam there there has to be like people they a certain age they became hip hop fans ah. and yeah. 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 Oh, 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 because that's what happened time, 2010 what else zaman is doesn't take fixed gear aku tak tahu ah macam there must something be something like else that. Yeah. around at that time yeah. yang macam people get into and there's there's always a thing but that doesn't mean that they were not into music yeah, yeah. they yeah, were yeah. just probably not into live music perception yeah. lah but so, there was also that whole thing with the apa black metal thing apa oh, yeah, I remember that false yeah. place can read semua was that was that how was that, that? that? Yeah, yeah. yeah that was around that era so, yeah. no no that was earlier that was earlier, 2005 earlier. 31st december yeah. nama yeah, 2006 yeah, 2005 yeah earlier but that was also millennial masa tu yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 siapa top band then those 2010 ah kalau kita boleh taklah kalau tak strange ah strange ah. Ah. Me, me personally yeah. i'm an always an avid restrained fan so 2010 is it was the dorang baru release first album dorang pure from blood so in for me the my eyes yang tengok metal and hardcore restrained until now celebrating 20 years but metal ago. came up really heavy 2010 onwards so yeah. check up so maybe like scene. one part of the scene that people everyone sees is like drowning out a bit tapi mungkin metal punya scene Betul. time tu so as i'm saying like maybe it's at the end of the day it's a matter of perception like one area of the fact that mainstream punya tu maybe time tu tengah dah indie is not such a big thing anymore yeah. but time tu lah juga time-time yang band-band daripada underground scene metal ke apa yeah. dia naik kan scene and unseen je lah so, ah. Wow. Seen and unseen. I love that. Yeah. I love that. So, tapi I remember that that time, cause uh, I was playing indie. Tapi I was the only indie band in the middle of a hardcore scene and a metalcore scene. So, time tu yang tengah naik itu was massacre, conspiracy, the yep. padang. Yeah. Okay. And so much um and and then I think that, that was a great time. Honestly, I enjoyed those times. Of course, man. Me too. Yeah. Man. And but I feel that much um and after that, at the traditional period, bula in between that scene and the current indie scene, masih ada gap. Do you guys realize? But, but during that gap, it was versus. It was uh, time to uh, the second versus. It was Kyoto, OCK, OCK, uh, Manifesto, etc. That was the start of the scene coming back up again with the OCK going touring and, and yep. yeah, stuff. OCK did that the, was the start. OCK did the mashup with Ash Massacre. Twenty thirteen, uh, oh, yeah. lah. That was. That was like I was there. Dekat, uh, dekat the the, the, the uh, space you in. Mall, yeah, that's space I was there right. live. Memang kat belakang dekat signboard besar besar tu, tank what tinggi. Nak masuk mesin ke tak? Masuk TV ni. <laughs> uh, that's how I felt. You know. And then uh, Mio down the years like, hey, if we cover this song, can you scream that part? Scream je, scream je. So uh, versus made it slightly open. Tapi, yelah, of course came along the way bash and the bash ini. Yeah. You know. But uh, I'm used to it. Yeah, but I think you're right. I think music in general has, when we're talking, when we go outside of our music scene bubble, right, the more general person has a different perception of what live music is in Malaysia. Um, because it's it's still you know everyone's still wearing black, everyone's still yes. so so yeah, for for you know so, <laughs> okay. uh, so for for an uninitiated, it feels like oh that's an exclusive club. Uh, a lot of people told me he actually came up to me say oh i love this kind of music tapi takut nak pergi rumah api i'm like why oh, oh. just not used to that kind of thing yeah, right feel, yeah. Yeah. so that's that's that as well that you need to take into consideration people's perception towards live music what is that we are still whether we like it or not it's still majority muslim right malay muslim here mm-hmm. so the perception towards live music is still very much skewed towards the conservative perspective also, also yeah. politics as well. Yeah, yeah, it's also that lah. But so if, if there's you all go this... on the ground, it, it doesn't feel that way. Music is still music. Yeah, yeah to I us mean, because we are we are within the music scene. But, but when you but go out of it, but even when we go down and see the kids that love music, they they love music. They, yeah. Not no matter what race I, they are, no matter what right, but how, state they live in. Because but, I've toured with OCK, 
when you go down on the ground, oh my god, everybody loves music. Yeah. They don't care whether you That's play true. punk or metal or what genre you play music. It's got perception, yeah. Mm. Perception lah, yeah. I think. But but uh, again, music to me is like it's like a surf season. It depends on what uh, genre is going to surf up, Correct. and and you have to be already paddling in the pool. When the surf comes, you have to be able to stand mm. and oh, surf yes. the wave. Yeah. Mm. So if you're um, if the punk season's coming in and you've got like 200 punk bands in in the water, some of them would have been paddling for longer and right in front. So when the wave comes, they stand up. And when the wave washes away, you left with two heroes on the beach who won the tournament. Tapi tak pun. And the rest all go back and sit and float in the ocean lah. Macam band yang surf ini kat atas tu pun, orang tak nampak yang sebenarnya berapa tahun dah dia pedal lah. Yeah. Oh, yes. yes. And you good exactly. energy tu. And, yeah, yeah. no, and, and the, the wave comes around every 16 to 20 years because that's what you grew up listening to. If I grew up listening to punk, when I hit the age of 20, or my dad grew up listening to punk, when I hit 20, for some unknown reason, you I'll be like, back. I love punk music. Yeah. Yeah, it's because yeah, yeah. my dad listened to punk, but I didn't realize it. It was like osmosis. Macam <laughs> ni lah sekarang kan. Like Iqbal lah eh. Iqbal M for me lah. Right now, if you talk about it, what band is is the top? Okay, Iqbal M. Katalah yang paling atas sekarang lah. I would say that lah. But I mean, Iqbal M. Iqbal M. Iqbal sendiri dah bawa banyak different transformation of Iqbal M dah. Yang sebelum tu kan. And it's the same as you think about it, like a couple of years back, hip-hop, like 16 baris and... I mean... I still think that hip hop is is sketchy sekarang yeah. but if you think about it is it as sketchy this year as it was like a couple of years yeah. back when 16 baris came the big thing right mm. so I think that if depends on which angle you look I think the perception has always been different but the scene has always been around uh, how do Malaysian bands macam uh, not just make money make a living betul betul out of music uh, through all these seasons, that's, that's, that's a really... But I think, first of all, we need to think back, like, kalau kita cakap music ni, macam main band ni macam surfing kan, tak semua orang jadi pro surfer lah. So, tak semua orang nak, nak setiasa dekat. Ada setengah orang, dia just suka surf je, dia tak power pun. Oh, yeah. Dia macam okay nak main music. So, I think, of course lah, I mean, they, there's people who who play music because they, simply because I love music. That's yeah. all. I don't it's care whether my album is going to sell or whatever. Oh, yeah. I think we have to differentiate between that. There are people who who I know for a fact that macam aku nak my music because aku nak make a living. You know, this is going to be my life. So there has to be a difference between that lah. But the question of being a sustainable band, I think that is a dilemma that any generation have always gone through. And I feel as though tak ada orang ada jawapan sebab apa every generation benda tu berubah. Yeah. Uh, you look at OAG punya zaman that they were on top. You know, it was a different dilemma that they went through. But macam kalau kau tengok juga macam hujan used to be you know, the, right now, like people think Hujan kat top kan. But Hujan used to be the band that's so easy for people to hate. The mainstream, whatever, to hate. You look at it and you're seeing it in Masdo right now. Senang gila untuk orang tak suka, orang tertentu lah, tak suka Masdo kind, kind of thing. Senang sangat. Senang, terlalu easy. Yeah. And it's like, easy for me to hate lah this band. So, that kind that of thing lah. But with, with in, in, in to do with sustainability, I think that, wow. I think it, it is definitely going to be a, a discussion because if we figured it out, then kita dah kaya dah. Ha? <laughs> yeah, I, I think nowadays, uh, the younger musicians ha understand what it takes. I mean, you can be, it's not just about the music. You can be a sing a songwriter for other people, for OSTs. You can uh, have your music played everywhere and anywhere where it's suitable with your music. But you have to understand how to find the suitability of your music to whoever you're selling to. Sponsors take all kinds of music. Okay. But it, we, we only shut ourselves out when we box ourselves in. We have to think a much larger market. Uh, I sell T-shirts. T-shirts make money. Now T-shirts probably make more money than the gig itself. Yes. Your merchandise makes more money. Yes. True. So you have to look at it and understand what, what it is that you have to do uh, and quickly do it. Don't st sit there and think to yourself, mm, is this right? Is this wrong? Is I also, you just do I also, it. I also feel that uh, a lot of artists or musicians are not very uh, aware of the business aspect of things. Uh. Mm, agree. That's yeah. a one fifty percent of your push is business. Fifty percent is the music itself. Behind every successful band, there is one fella yang macam okay, this is how we make money. We're gonna push this for the next three years. Cash out. Right. So there's there's a lot of that. There's a lot of networking going around. There's a lot of all this kind of stuff that 
as, as a bedroom musician or as, as a person starting out, you might be ob oblivious that this exists. To but you'd be surprised. Yes. Yeah, you'd be surprised. It's that a matter of supply and demand. Yeah. yeah. I always ask Ben, okay, sekarang ni kau buat music untuk Kau ke? kepuasan sendiri ke untuk buat duit? Yeah. You know, if you want to buat duit, you buat cara buat duit lah. Simple lah. You don't like macam, oh, I'm doing it for my music, blah, blah, blah. Then, oh, tak ada orang support. I mean, dude. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you know. Dia cakap, at the end of the day, dia paling penting untuk kau tahu lah. Ah. Kat mana you stand kan. Kalau kau nak buat music, kau nak ada fan beribu-ribu, kau kena fikir lah apa yang beribu-ribu. Kau buat lah, 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 you cannot think that music, making music and music tu akan jual diri dia sendiri lah. It's not enough betul, anymore. Betul, betul. You cannot think like, aku tulis lagu, lagu aku sedap, lagu aku akan jual. Kau kena jual kat banyak lagi different angle. Yeah. Kau kena create a community yang support engkau. Kau kena pandai fikir financials. These kind of things. Yeah. So, like for me, but, but that's why my thinking doesn't work for everyone. But I always believe that, you know, instead of musicians thinking like aku nak main band supaya supaya benda tu boleh sustain hidup aku, which is the big dream for everyone, right? Aku rasa maybe musicians patutnya fikir macam mana aku nak make sure passion aku boleh sustain itself. I agree, yeah. but but it's extremely difficult to as because I I try to be a musician as well, but uh, to to switch between a creative brain and a business brain oh, is susah bro yes. that is business dilemma. kau kena uh, tag in with the fucking eh? apa a polo shirt That's on the ferrari to find on the fucking yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. for managers are important <laughs> exactly <laughs> but, but, but the problem with malaysia is i think in the scene lah daripada dulu sampai sekarang okay we have live venues we have promoters we have bands but we don't have record labels indie record labels betul right? so we have punk record labels we have the big boys and the Malay scene yang macam okay you've got the Lunchai Mas, you've got the NS uh, all these kind of labels but not indie bands that work or of or have a similar view like the punk punk labels so Malaysia banyak punk labels punk distros tapi indie tak ada so if you cannot talk business find your friend yang masa dekat college tu yang buat business me course kata eh hey, bro kau nak yeah, exactly. manager so you got to be creative about that and I don't know, maybe we don't have enough examples of independent labels. Uh, we had one, Positive Tone, yep. but they crash and burn. Um, yeah, so I don't know. So I think, the, I think that's, that's the thing. That's, I mean, in terms of you spoke about PR and networking, and there's two separate brains. There's the creative one, and then the, you cannot switch to business. If you're a musician... It's not, you can't. It's yeah, very exactly. difficult. Uh, and then when you're creative, you're not necessarily the one that can easily talk to someone in public. Yeah. Betul, Usually, betul. that's always the case. So, like Kak Jen cakap, like get someone to help, professional right, right. or whatnot, which is very lacking amongst bands. And some bands, I think, I, I believe from my eyes, they believe they can do it themselves. But when they like meet a client, they crash and burn. Duh. Duh, so, duh. It, sebab tu bagi aku, pendapat aku is still that macam uh, kita ada masalah yang semua nak buat sendiri oh, kan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, be, kita kena realise that there's a lot of different elements in the music industry. Like, I always feel like sometimes musicians think like, you know, aku punya problem seorang. But you have to understand, like, you've got videographers, you've got gig venue. In order for us to sustain, it has to be all these things. Perfect example like this kan. Kau imagine musician ni semua ni, sorry aku bagi example pokok. I don't know why pokok. <laughs> but it's like this lah eh. Setiap pokok perlu matahari baja berbeza, betul tak? Tapi kalau tanah tu subur, it's good for everyone. So what we have to figure out is that how do we create a tanah yang subur yang yang boleh membantu segala orang right, instead right. of like semua orang sendiri macam honestly like I went to that cendana punya benda hari tu where okay. like semua orang datang mengamuk dengan masalah masing-masing kan so that's not going to solve the problem because everyone's thinking about their individual problem the solution that that has to become it has to be a community solution benda yang aku selalu rasa macam lah DIY tu penting tapi kita kena fikir macam do it together tu is another thing that if let's say we want to sustain in the long run you've got to think about your videographers you've got to think about your media yeah, your but, gig but, venue but, but it, 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 ecosystem lah there, there has to be an ecosystem but, but sometimes sometimes we have to understand that we, you can teach a room of a hundred people and only two people will learn. Oh, yes. So, uh, basically, um, sometimes you have to go through the journey to be who you are. And I, I think that's very important for anybody in the creative business is you have to go the journey. Because that's what makes us all different from each other is because we all got different journeys in, in our life. And the same thing with musicians and, and people who create music. I become different. I become who I am. I find myself in my journey. 
At first, I would start copying somebody. I sound like, I feel like, I look like. But eventually, you hit that, that place where I am me. Mm. And some people hit it really quick. And some people take 10, 15 years to find out who they are. But the key thing is you have to love the process. The process is your journey. Yes. Kadang-kadang kita terlalu mulut tak cakap macam bila orang tengok yang surfer ke atas tu, orang tak nampak yang surfer ke atas tu, dia dah pedal berapa lama dah, dah lengur, dah tenggelam, dah tenggulik. So macam yang pentingnya adalah kau kena faham yang kau kena go to process. And first first of all, benda yang aku rasa macam agak naif untuk kau suddenly go into Malaysian's independent scene, Betul kau nak benda tu senang. Confirm susah bro. Yes. <laughs> kalau kau kalau kau try to lawan benda tu susah, buang masa kau, buang yeah. energy kau. Accept the fact that benda tu susah. But let, let's put it this way, it's not only the independence scene. You want to be a doctor, you want to be a lawyer, <laughs> you want to be hard. whatever it's it is. Hard. It's hard, okay? At least kita life susah, kita hard. layan bad. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, life is hard lah. Uh, I mean, Mainstream pun nak sedang ke? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Right. Do you Jala know how many orang try nak jadi penyanyi and tak make it? I mean oh, like, yeah. so macam kau band, I mean nak, yeah. bukan nak tu lah, I mean band is, a, yeah, like you said lah, I mean like, do I have la- 10,000 la- people la- come to me and say, I can't get my song on radio. Hey, take a number and wait. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, and yeah. there's people in mainstream that can't get their song that's on radio. True, that's true. So wait, hey, hello. Even like, sometimes high profile pun nak masuk yes. pun tak lepas, right? So and do yeah. something about it. Yeah. You don't just sit there and complain. And Betul. The, and the truth is like, kita semua yang borak kat sini secara jujur ni, actually kan, jangan percaya cakap aku, jangan percaya semua orang. We don't know shit. Honestly, we don't know shit. But the key is that we accept the fact that it's hard. So we're just yes, going out and trying to yeah. do stuff. Try and error, though. Ah, uh, try and error. So kalau macam like macam and and aku still believe that benda yang aku rasa perlu ubah adalah perception. Sebab kita bila kita sendiri tak jual benda tu sebagai great, kita sendiri yang macam lah, alah si Malaysia macam ni ya, lah, macam tu kan. Then how is it that people are going to be thinking that kita gempak sebenarnya? Sebab kita punya perception tak diri kita sendiri. Like we go. Like I recently I was in Singapore to talk about uh, they had a, a conference lah. So bercakap pasal uh, government support. So kita selalu menganggapkan bahawa Singapore has the best government support, right? Government support betul-betul kau-kau power kat dia I went to Singapore and benda dia bring out lah. We need more government support lah. <laughs> But that's like, the, itu itu memang masalah rakyat. Dah uh, diberi peha nak betis. Uh, uh, dah beri betis nak peha. Uh, But they actually have a, an amazing government. Uh, apa ni? In terms of yeah. support. Yeah, dude, right. they, they send. They've been sending Singaporean bands to South by Southwest for years. Yeah, but they have so, other problems lah. Sini orang kecil exactly. pula. Betul. So yeah. like, yeah. at the end of the day, it it is a matter of perception. And I think that you know what? Maybe if we stop and just be like, you know what? Great lah. Kita actually going out and do stuff. Maybe that would be better. Sebab kalau kita pergi ke Malaysia, kita ikat band band Malaysia. Kita, Malaysia punya scene tak best. Actually, Indonesian band pun nak main kat Malaysia sebenarnya. Ya, yeah, betul. But kita yang bunuh perception tu dengan kita downkan balik segala benda kita buat. And I don't think that helps, man. I still Downing this each other doesn't really, help. Really, the basis of everything is that we have to learn that we have to support ourselves. Who the hell else going to support yeah. us? And each other. To, to me, simple lah. Dia macam, if you like a girl or you like a guy, right? You suka example kau, mesti melibatkan perempuan. No, no. <laughs> Paling senang, How paling senang orang, it? paling senang orang apa? <laughs> eh, kalau kau suka perempuan, right? You go all out to ensure that you get that girl, right? Betul. So meaning kalau kau suka music, I mean you should go all out, kau. Love Simple the process lah. So meaning through, kalau ha? kau tak go all out, meaning you don't love music that much. Ya? Simple lah. Yeah. Dia punya tu. Memanglah susah nak dapat awak. Awak ni tak layan aku sial. So are you going to give up? Yeah, you know, somebody got music. Eh. And music even if you do get dumped, yeah. you go on, you learn something. Yeah. yeah. So it's so true. Berbaloi yeah. lah. Yeah. Kalau yeah. ada berbaloi. Tiga benda lama ni. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. So, lah. It's alright. It's alright. So, We learn from it. You don't totally lose something lah. You actually gain something yes. from it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Macam Faris cakap, uh, instead of DIY, why don't do it together? Do it together. Orang punya tebal kepala nak do it together is still there. The gil, belaga. I believe I can do things better by myself. But cannot really open the mind that uh, apa orang kata. Uh, Teamwork is important. But yeah. I think that's quite normal. When you're yeah. young and you believe you're invincible, mm. it's very normal. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, for yeah. me, it's fine. No problem. Please go and learn. Yeah. The hard way. Uh, w- yes, exactly. <laughs> the hard way was Padan Mukta. You pay your dues, man. No, no, no. It's not Padan Mukta. <laughs> it's not Padan Mukta. It's your journey. No, no, no. It's your journey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to take it. Please step on the road and go. 
and I'll see you soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not pada muka. It's it's just a nice way of saying pada yeah. muka lah. Mm. <laughs> I'll see you soon means I, I'm always here. I'm here to help you. I'm ready to help. But if you need to take the journey, please take it. No, they have to take the journey. Yeah, yeah. Have to take the journey. I mean, you can see all the bands, bittersweet. Come on, look at how long it took them. Now they're they they're, they're so big. Look at the crowd. The the university kids go crazy over them. But how long have they been paddling in the water? Long good. Iqbal M dulu masa sama XFM, lagu tembak tepat. Dia masuk cerita XFM underground je kot. Yes. Ah, ten years later, you know. So I mean, like. It's it's part of the process, ah. I think, but I, I don't think people should slash off DIY, ah. I mean, like whatever. No, yeah, yeah, do it yourself, true, true, true. do yourself, ah. They should yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. Up, ah. The concept of DIY, do it yourself. Tapi meaning, kalau kau tak boleh buat tu, ada orang lain yang boleh buat. That is yeah. DIY, bukan uh. DIY. Oh, semua aku nak buat sendiri. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, like there's no one in the world yang macam. So, so, orang jadi yeah. Yeah. so I think that's there's a thing lah. Lah perception juga. <laughs> ah. <laughs> If let's say kita boleh baiki that perception as well, like you know, everyone's hustling. Like we're all in this together in a way. Ah. If we we start seeing it that way and kita start tolong angkat each other, then maybe we've got something going on. Because at the end of the day. Kadang-kadang betul gempa, tapi tak ada orang cakap betul gempa dia tak jadi gempa we. Ah. Uh, tapi kalau macam benda tu susah for this for people to. Understand this unless they've been there and then they can then mm. they are like, oh, oh yeah we need to work together. Yeah. But then some some people need to learn that they they want to do it their way. It's it's tough. I think all of us have been through that before. Even just starting off, I want to be the hero. I want to uh, rule the world. Want be the king right? and whatnot. But yeah, I also right. like to add, can I add humble uh, along the way? Because sometimes yeah you learn. Macam ada cakap pada muka kan, but. If along the way you tak insert humble, humble is always you always tak insert humble. You don't learn in the end. Yeah, itu yeah. ada beza dia sebenarnya. Ada level dia beza. Dia ada humble dengan humble. Kau jadi humble lah. Kau jangan dia humble. Kau apa pun orang buat orang bullying kau, kau hina oh, yes. kau, kau terima. Tapi kau kena humble lah. Humble dengan humble tu ada beza. Kau beza kan lah kat bahagian tu. And that's the thing about about I I feel like with the Malaysian scene, especially bila melibatkan Melayu juga, kita selalu um, malu tak bertempat. Kadang-kadang kita macam nak nak jual diri, time yang patut kita jual diri kita tak nak jual. Tapi tu dia cakap, eh tak ah, banyak band I feel like dia macam kita orang tak gempak. So ah, actually macam... actually what we're discussing is a social issue lah. <laughs> it's a social it science is, issue. It lah. is a social issue. <laughs> it's it's not infrastructure, it's not anything much. Yes. But it's, it's it's the content itself. So how do we address that? We have to go deeper into that. So it's hard to diagnose the issue because we're talking about not just the music scene, we're talking about the population of Malaysian in general. Ah, and that gets that. a bit tricky because I'm not a professor or I don't have masters in psychology yeah, or anything like that. Same goes to us here. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's it's a bit it's a bit tricky, this kind of question. But it, it, I mean, the, the problem is that, that music is not um, something that is pushed to people at a very young age. Mm. Where else in Indonesia, in in um, Philippines, people are playing guitars <coughs> much yeah. younger, singing, singing songs in church. Not just music. I mean, look at right. art. Yeah, uh, my I mean, my experience I mean, uh, of art was watercolor. Yeah, that's like what I'm saying is that that uh, it is. But if we're narrowing down to music, it's the same thing as art. Is that um, I think our government is too afraid to let people be creative because creative people are never silent. Creative yes, people always wonder yes, why. If you give me something and tell me this is a, a table, I will say, why is this called a table? I'm not going to say, oh yes, it's a table. I'm going to say, why is it a table? And why? It can be square, it can be rectangular, it can be triangular. Creative people do this. Yeah, because it's like a lack of infrastructure. I think like we were kids, when we were kids, uh, if, if it's not because of our fathers or relatives, macam susah kita nak pick up music Betul, atau kalau kita tak expose mak bapak kita bukan ah. jenis yang macam tu it's really hard for automatically suddenly kau nak suddenly be into music or get involved with the scene that is true lah aku rasa education tu is important and that's where the government comes in but this argument with the government i feel like kalau kita kita argue behind government ni kita tak ada power pun kat bahagian tu dia tak akan solve juga see, see, <laughs> see what 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 i feel a bit frustrating is the government knows the problem They know this is a fucking problem. But they don't want to solve it. They don't want to. They, it's not that they, they cannot. 
Tak tahu dia Itu bukan KPI dia, dia, dia lah. Tu. Mana ada KPI dia berkenaan dengan ah, dia Tak, to me, I, I will always go back to the punk rules so, Macam okay, dia contoh macam okay Kalau dia tak nak tolong, you do uh, Kau, kau, you Buat find ways lah, yeah. 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 You know, you find ways So, yeah. macam Macam, going back tadi, apa um, uh, But I think Malaysia needs examples lah I think more more examples of like People who have done that Sebab aku rasa dia kena ada tengok macam Okay, Mamat tu buat macam tu, jom kita ikut dia Sebab kalau you tengok, everyone here, a, right? Yeah. Everyone here are doing something that dia punya, dia punya meat is music but in various way. Meaning, instead of, uh, I, I feel lah, macam instead of you focus on musician atau bands, they are banyak lagi macam you cakap ekosistem yang masih tak ada orang buat. You know, so if you want to contribute something or kalau betul kau nak macam the music scene or whatever to grow, kau fill up the loopholes lah. Does it make you a lesser music fan? You yeah. know, macam, yeah, Faris minat music, tak main music pun. But he yeah. still, you know. Sebab aku sudah diri. Sebab yeah, aku yeah, tak main yelah, music. But, you know, but <laughs> there's always ways, right? There's always yeah, ways, you know, right? I feel like everyone has a role to play. Yeah. It's very important yes. for you to realise that. But it, it's hard though, because some people kenapa aku tak main music? Like, I know from the moment... I played my one gig. Do eh, people don't know I played the gig. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some more. The video proof. Ah, tak ada lagi sah, tak ada lagi sah. Tapi the moment I was there, I realised that macam this is not You're my not role. This, yeah. this is not meant to be for me lah. Aku Same. punya punya bahagian adalah bahagian bahagian. Wait, didn't you play? <laughs> yes, I played bass, but I knew like you him. You played bass? Yeah, yeah I knew like yeah. him. That no, not professionally. I played one gig like him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the same band. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn! Really, not, not built for this lah. So, but there are so many other things that you can do. You know, to make meriah lah. Jangan yeah. tengok band je. Yeah, but I think, yeah. I think yeah. what all of us can do, and what it's, it's about people at home as well realizing is that people have to realize that in order for it for there to be a demand for this, because the key of it is like the demand lah. Mm. We need to see what is the value of music. Kenapa music tu penting? But here's the thing, you know, orang bercakap pasal, oh, ada orang jadi doktor selamatkan nyawa, ada orang engineer bina jalan, ataupun saya. Tapi kalau pergi balik, betul, betul, betul semua bagus, apa value music? Can you say that music, for me, one of the greatest value is that music boleh selamatkan nyawa? So, do people realise that? Because people are not willing to pay. It's just music. But when do you realise that music can actually save lives? Music can can also inspire. And you're not just talking about music lah. You're talking about the arts. If kita boleh find a way for people to realise that all these things are value. So, orang akan sanggup keluar duit for it's, it to sustain. And true, I think that's the main thing that has to exist lah. But we also, we also have to remember that in the Malaysian context, right? Uh, our parents, the baby boomers, were kids that grew up post-World War. So music wasn't, food was the most important thing. Correct. Uh, music correct. was not, right? Being fashionable was not. Yeah. Up until the 70s, 80s, then they started to be a bit more comfortable. Oh yeah, we, let's let's embrace our independence. But So they, they come from a different mindset. But to rely on them for the direction of where music or arts should go in Malaysia, yeah. boleh lah tolong. Ada lah dua tiga yang betul-betul power that we cannot deny. But the youth needs to move, dude. I yeah. think I think yeah. we are still a very young country, though. Yeah. I mean, uh, you look at the. I think US our leaders are old. Years old. No, I, think, I, think <laughs> I agree. I agree that people <laughs> are young, obvious, right? but because it's, that's the thing. Like you, you, you're right. But that's the thing. If the policies are being made by people who still think that if the policies are being made by people who still think that if the policies are being made by people who still think that if the policies are being made by people who no, the, prob- the problem in Malaysia is if you make the policy for the industry, not for yourself, then it's okay. Uh, because it's okay. the guys who are making the policies are the guys who are banking in on the policy yeah. change. Yeah. Boom, ah, which is boom. bullshit. We're going there. Yeah. Boom. No, We're no going to there. me, that's why. Since aku dah lama dah give up <laughs> macam to industry. Because to me, I don't need yeah. you. I mean, Correct. you have your own agenda. I, I'll do my own thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, not, not to discredit Did people. The industry? Huh? Did you give up on the industry? Yeah, I give up. Okay. <laughs> you know, orang orang tanya macam, eh, no, because to me lah macam, okay, industry is not giving back anything to anything. I understand because it is an industry. Yeah. Whereas a scene to lain. Lain. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you okay, know. Okay, I get it. So, so yeah. that's why he's going to But, but, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's why like kita in the scene. So, macam like, that's why whatever argument that we have towards the government or whatever not, the government is going to be the government. Like, yeah. we have to do our own thing. Then, 
maybe they open their eyes but the key thing they is that never kenapa lah, kenapa jangan lah, jangan optimistic eh, no no actually actually what, what, what you know you know i like, I like the optimism <laughs> uh, you know. no no what we should do is we should huddle together and say yeah. hey we are doing something then the guy in the suit perception government will come eh dia orang tengah buat apa situ ah, ah, so. that's what we doing we are huddling dia cakap eh that's like macam you know 90 billion you know uh, industry confirm. going on here ah uh, then they'll come to you tiba ada je datang nak potong riben yeah, yeah but yeah, like, macam like, okay it goes back to macam kalau you cakap scene right kalau you tengok scene kita memang tak balance gila babi you have like 80% bands lepas tu you know market besar tu 8 8 ada yeah, 20% tu is like maybe orang buat fanzine apa dia tak balance lah. yeah, yeah. okay that is that's cakap that ecosystem there, yeah. there has so to macam, be ecosystem kalau semua nak jadi band siapa nak tulis pasal band siapa nak review pasal band semua orang at least like no one wants to be, yeah, to be defender mean, like, the goalkeeper <laughs> the manager it's cool you know to be like macam Leicester Banks ke apa i know i was one of them chief of blagak saya aku aku awal tak nak tak nak jadi striker sebab tu aku main dekat position apa ya yeah, banyak lagi benda kau boleh buat goli tak semua orang suka kena rembat but i say come on yeah, but, <laughs> i say i say bring I it that. i say bring it you know that, that's me growing up yeah, but i yeah. think at the end of the day like you cannot de- depend on them for change to happen like what if let's say it's going Because to happen still government it, it doesn't that matter that. <laughs> and go tak bagi aku at the end of the day kita buat jelah <laughs> kita kalau dia nak dengar dia dengar ah kan kalau dia tak dengar tak apa but i think it's true we just have to continue doing the work that we do because yeah. eventually change will happen but yes. when it ever it happens it happens when, yeah. maybe it doesn't happen yes, it might time. not even be our time when, yeah. when is when we'll be paddling for the longest of time lah ah. the when but kalau you tak change point you know what right? at least we're no, having a good time oh, sebenarnya yeah, at the end of the day kalau, kalau apa-apa pun lah let's say it doesn't change lah at least bagi aku aku struggle buat benda aku minat daripada yeah. aku buat benda yang tak. tapi Jen yang paling penting I haven't sold my car That's ah, pretty yes. penting. Ah. I was telling him, never sell your car ah. for anything. I don't care what. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the, like I said, I mean, you have to remain positive. You, yes. The perception is amongst us. Tak, to me, there are many peluang tau for the scene to grow. It's just like we need more doers. Yes. Doers. Kurangkan mengeluh, banyak peluh. Do, yeah. Semua yeah. senang yeah. mengeluh. Yeah. Jangan komplain, Sebab komplain, macam, komplain, komplain. Now, banyak kalau kalau, kalau so tanya, okay, where, where kalau Malaysia ni, aku nak tahu, oh, band mana is in the studio recording something. Kat mana aku nak pergi tu? Huh? So, there's a gap. To me, bukan nak complain. Meaning, oh, there's a gap. You know, there's a gap. There's a two that someone can come in and fill up. Yeah. yeah. You know, so macam, I think it's a key component to get people excited. It's like for, to macam, bagi orang to be in the know. Yeah. So sekarang ni masing-masing masing memang a lot of people are doing any a lot of things but okay aku nak pergi mana. Betul. That's why there has to be some like for me benda yang aku try buat dengan tapau sekarang adalah like I said before dulu the central part of it kalau kau nak tahu band best tak best segala benda kau pergi MySpace because that is where the community is. Yes. Where, where is it now? So the the idea of oh, jual kita berniaga sekejap sebab tu aku nak try buat tapau Asia. That the whole point is like you know there yeah. should be a community of it and I think that in order for sustain, we cannot just think about Malaysia. It should be Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore. Sebab yeah, tak kecil yeah. sangat market. So, contoh lah. Tiba-tiba macam sekarang cakap, eh, kata tak Joe is releasing an album. New album. Follow up to have You know, benda macam tu pun okay. Eh. Kalau Joe boleh dapat, dapat tahu lagi lah kat mana. Artis yang lain. lain okay, yang lagi okay. sah. No, I mean like, eh, eh, <laughs> tapi macam okay. Uh, this year is going to be exciting year ini. Contoh eh, contoh eh. It's going to be exciting year ini. Hot sebab. Too Fat is releasing an album but not as a group. But, you know, Joe and Malik akan head on. Ni betul album. ke cakap ni kan? I'm giving example kalau betul ke tak. Oh. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. You, you hinting kan? No, wait, no, wait and see. No, no. See, benda-benda macam ni yang missing dalam kita punya scene. Betul. You know, yes. Bila, eh, apa lah, you know, you get people to start you talking. You get people to be excited. Talk about it. Yes. Yeah. Stories that excite you. Yeah, you know, benda, yeah. kita tak ada macam tu. Macam Tapi review. Susah, because that's media. And you know yeah, how the we, media we, landscape is. Kita tak ada is. media. The oh, scene tak ada that media yang macam agresif, macam, you know. Dia tak ada cuba, media. Bro, kita cuba marahan. Tiba-tiba yeah. rasa. Dia <laughs> susah. I know bro. I, I know yeah, sebab it's... aku buat tone magazine masa tu susah. We know. We are trying. Ilba B. Ini tak boleh. Okay, susah tak is given lah. Yeah, susah is given. But now, I mean, okay, tone yes. dah, dah serve it purpose. I think ada banyak lagi budak-budak yang, you know, I'm sure a lot of people who are passionate about music who can write. Mm, yes. You know, ma- ma- yang bukan satu, dua, tiga, but ramai, you know. Yeah, then yeah. the question is why aren't they writing? Because you have Twitter, you have Facebook, yeah. you have Instagram. Yeah. But, Not a lot of people are writing. Dia macam, everyone's just sitting there. Hey, well, let's wait for something. Tak, orang okay. semua kebanyakan lagi suka komen kat segmen tu. Bodoh lah dia <laughs> orang. Itulah writing ni. Eh. Itulah writing. But, but maybe I... because I I noticed one thing that Malaysians, especially on Twitter, they love to... I think Malaysians don't like to write but they like to write on social media. 
So they love to write long posts on Facebook. No, then you should do macam Jen. Jen punya feed is all oh, geek. You know, kalau you nak tahu geek kat mana, ada Jen punya tu. You know? Ah, yalah. Maybe that's it. Maybe you know, that's okay, what Malaysia is. We will never have Malaysia magazine. Malaysia. On Twitter pun cukup je. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, this one, blah, blah, blah. You know, this one is in the studio, blah, blah, blah. We hear, blah, blah. Simple je. Yeah, yeah. Tak payah nak tu, you know, meaning you need to, in order to have all that information, you need to network lah. It goes back to the scene punya concept lah. Itu je. Dia tak susah tu sebab to me just do it because you love it the rest will follow simple yeah, je. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kalau kau enjoy benda tu dah sekali macam insyaallah you if it's meant to work out it's going to work I think out. There yeah. are people like anyway. that junk list is there. Yeah, junk list. Uh, junk list. There are a number of people Kugiga. trying and even what Bypass. we're doing right now is also Yeah, uh, reaching out to to people. So atas pun macam instead of just being a gig venue, now yeah, they're correct. producing content as well. So macam like when we did tapau, like the thing that we, that we realised like people like kenapa tapau tak buat ni, kenapa tak buat tu? Soalan aku balik adalah aku tak buat tapau supaya aku buat semua. Aku buatlah supaya apa kata kau orang buat juga. Instead aku ah. tanya kenapa aku tak Jangan buat. Jangan tanya aku. Kau, kau tak buat lah, pergilah buat. Lah. Kau, yang tu kat rumah tu, buatlah. Benda kau ni. Kan? <laughs> Aduh. Betul kan? Ah. Tanya, eh. Goram. Bila nak buat proses buku lagi? Ha, ah, bila nak buat review angka balik? Ah. Aku <laughs> Sorry, Andy. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, I think we understood that macam the ecosystem, our ecosystem has to be stronger in general lah. I mean, I mean. I think I'm, we have to realise first that there has to be ecosystem. Semua orang ada role to play lah. Sebab kadang-kadang aku rasa macam bila kau ada band, kadang-kadang eh, tak semua band macam ni. Aku rasa band beranggapan bahawa videographer adalah fan aku. Kau tak rasa ke sebenarnya videographer ni adalah benda yang kau perlu? Dia bukan actually, setakat actually, fan kau. I, 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 won't, I won't drop the name lah. But I met this band who treats their videographer as the extension of the band member. So be. the videographer told me, yeah, we are going to this place and play. I'm like, wah, cool shit. We all know who that band yeah. is, but okay. Uh. Yeah, yeah. You, you might know. But, <laughs> yeah. So aku rasa macam at the end of the day, like, it's, it's important for us to realise that there are more roles. It's not just the music will not sell itself. So the way the scene is going, going to grow is not by the amount of albums being released or the amount of bands that's out there. But it's about like the content creation, the gig venues, the yeah. band managers, the orang yang menulis. All of this plays an important role. When Faris say ecosystem, right, I also like to say that Please have equal equality, whereas macam uh, you were saying about the extended family member. And, but kenapa tak? By the end of the day, why not treat? Even though the extended family of the band, tapi cameraman not. So how much does he get? Fifty, hundred. Why doesn't you like acknowledge talent someone yang macam Farid cakapkan? You're doing everything though. Cameraman, kalau record gambar, ke angle lu cantik, it it apa orang kata? Changes, ex- yeah. changes accelerates. Kalau video cut. Yeah. Shout Social media viral. Shout out to Arif Rizwan, shout out to Fidaw Zulkifli, Cipo, yeah. shout out to all these people sebenarnya bila gambar cun, benda tu change perception of everything already. Music videos. Kesian tu sebenarnya kalau kita, sekarang ni aku rasa banyak gila music video. Banyak gila. Yeah. Tapi macam kita kena upkan the game of music videos. They cannot just be... Tak tahu lah Faris, benda soalan ni it's, it's to me lah, it's... Kau kena belajar sendiri lah bro. You gotta, you gotta realise that yourself, dude. Yeah. Yeah, We yeah. shouldn't be telling them what to do, dude. Yeah. Kita yeah. pun kaya agak. Apa ni orang orang tua ni nak ajar kita apa nak buat. Dia macam, dia yeah. macam. Yeah. 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 This is the journey, I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, you know, know. it's just like telling journey. telling guys like, hey, you should read more, man. That's like, no, so seriously, I know you. Yeah. You gotta know that. You wanna... I mean, if you if you, you want to say <laughs> if you want to say examples, we have a lot of examples in the business already. We have. Hujan, we have Bang Face, yeah. we have Yuna, we have... Okay, actually, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I mean, but they are already examples of people who came from the indie mm. scene and didn't sit on their ass and did something and yeah. moved. No matter what they did, they moved. So... Actually, I, I've always had this question in my head. Uh, why why is there segregation? Uh? Are the kasta mainstream and scene? Why 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 isn't the, the mainstream guys... Question. Uh-huh. Not, the, huh? not the mediator. The yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, but... but You see, the mainstream guys, right? Bila katalah aku pergi jalan-jalan terjumpa someone lah, some mainstream star, they will always look like, kau ni siapa? Siut? I'm like, yo, dude. Tak kenal maka tak cinta. Yeah, yeah, but why is there like, ada kasta tu, mainstream, scene. Like, the whole thing is the whole damn yeah, thing. It goes both ways. Kan? Yeah. If people see Faris kat tepi jalan, yang pergi scene kenal Faris. Mm. No, like, betul, to, to, aku kena to, 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 Let me use the awet term lah. Ah, oh, Faris tak apa, Faris tak apa. Oh, you know what I mean? That happens all the time. Uh, <laughs> and then the girls that shout Faris tak apa, jumpa a mainstream artist, tak kenal. So, yeah. it goes both ways. Betul, segregation dia besar. 
And, yeah, and also, it goes back to what you said, it's perception. Yes, yeah. it is. Macam orang pandang, oh, oh macam this, this star, dia menang AJL, dia macam gila babi, walaupun lepas tu dia senyap. Okay, I'm just saying. And, but, <laughs> but, tapi macam, bila, eh, apa, he, our indie practitioners, our indie fans, pandang our indie bands as heroes. In the end, is how... Perception and preferences. Yes. No, yes. no, no, I'm not talking from the audience perspective. I'm talking yeah. about from the artist perspective. Ah, to the audience. Like... Ah, itu tak tahu lah. Ah, nanti... Kena bawa dia orang macam jawab orang. Ah, call lah dia orang. Nanti aku nak jumpa. Oh, ya. Call sekarang. Well, I think it is a... Tak kenal maka tak cinta. Because they don't know... I mean, they don't watch traditional mainstream TV. But that's the thing though. Like, as a creative, aren't you curious about... Yeah, but you're saying Maybe because that, like, the color tengok sekarang ni pun Naim Daniel. Like, I don't know a lot about him, but you know he's getting involved with hujan punya benda juga. Yeah, so, yeah okay, that's that's so, good. So, yeah, that's a I good mean, example. Like, at the yeah. end of the day, is sendiri punya pasal lah, sendiri punya fikir. Lah. If orang berasa bahawa because at the end of the day, music is music. So I'm pretty sure Naim Daniel enjoys music hujan and hujan pun respect orang. Yeah. So kalau kau nak buat, kau buat. Yeah, sense, yeah. So macam I think people are much more open. I just think that. Itu adalah atas diorang sendiri ya. No, I, I think I think if this is this goes back to the ecosystem thing. Sorry ya, mm. uh, so ecosystem thing. In order for the ecosystem to work, everyone needs to work together, right? Mm. Yeah. That's that's a general belief lah. So if no one knows who is in the ecosystem, then how are we going to work together? Like if Siti Nurhaliza doesn't know who, whoever lah, right? Whoever give you an example, no Sally, they probably know who each other, but. If they don't know each other, then how do we create the ecosystem? Do we create like uh, okay, kita kita calonkan dia ni jadi leader. So does it become like a patriarch system? Then berkasta lagi sekali. But, but, but honestly, I don't I don't think the people on top gives a shit. Yeah. I think it's yeah, yeah, to start yeah. from here. Yeah. And tak tahu buat apa. I think orang orang atas they have the fame, they have the money. There's nothing. But which is which is unfortunate. Orang atas, I think lah, from personal experience, selalu kalau orang atas uh, don't give a shit. It's actually they care, but the ones uh, in between them, yang let's say ada middleman, ada PA ke apa, they are ah, the, they are the lah, ones the parasite. Juga. Sometimes, any personal experience lah. You know, I'm not going to name names, but, you know, but when you meet that someone on top, they're, okay, they're yeah. nicest of nicest people. But but you have to understand that when it, it doesn't really matter whether you're mainstream yeah. or you're yeah. independent. It, it's all about a mindset. You're all going through the same troubles True. and you're all... You can imagine if you're on the top of mainstream, do you know how much work that you have to do? How many freaking times you have to wake up at 9 o'clock in the morning and go and sit in some radio station yeah. and, and talk stories which you don't want to talk, <laughs> but you, you're talking anyway? Yeah. To so, sustain that, yeah. Yes. And, and some even sing songs that you don't want to sing. Yeah, and, and it's hard. So they are spending their whole life trying to sustain a life mm. in, in the mainstream. They have no time to look down, you know. The minute they look down, somebody else is going to surpass yeah, them. Bit, and it's the yeah. same thing on the indie scene. Kilo, is if kilo. you're on the top of the indie scene, you look left a bit and somebody is going to surpass you. So once you hit a certain momentum or a certain rhythm, you have to step more on the accelerator. My advice to every artist is, if you are night sikit, do not step, take your foot off the sec yeah. accelerator. You have to step on it even harder. Shit. But the main thing is that don't be an asshole lah. Whatever it is, put a crosser. Absolutely. Jangan jadi asshole lah. Tekan minyak boleh, tapi jangan kurang ajar lah. Jangan tekan minyak sambil tu lah. Jangan tu lah. Tapi tak boleh. Aku rasa you need one or two person macam tu. Betul lah. Untuk hiburan. That's why you need the asshole. You know, for entertainment sake. Eh, the drama pun tarik orang lah. Yeah, I mean like, you need people like that. Kalau semua baik, dia pun sangat. I think we've spoken enough about macam, macam what we can do better. And okay now, I want, I have a burning question. So we we were talking about waves, right? So there are waves, there are a lot of waves, and and then macam you know scenes uh, go by, genres go by, genre, ada ada naik ada ada yang turun. Tapi there are some bands internationally. I'm gonna take Foo Fighters as a, as a, as an example. They have survived all these waves. Macam how do these bands survive? And there's a business behind it. So I always wondered, like, why is Bob Marley still famous? Why is Jimi Hendrix still famous? Yeah. And, oh, yeah, the company owns the back catalog, yes. yeah. so they keep they have to keep pushing out. Mm. This, this, you know, if you think from a business perspective, right? I have this album. The writer is probably passed away. Hey, free, free money, bro. Selagi <laughs> they're relevant, they'll see the dollar sign. But you yeah. can also create relevance. Relevant yes, you ah. can. I mean, look at Coldplay, for example. They really know how to. 
keep themselves relevant. And you have to imagine that those bands that you're talking about have already, they know who they are. They are very secure with who they are, yeah. whether it's Queen so they're or... they're not worried anymore. Or, uh, Discovery, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't matter who, who, but they know. They sing the phone book, so they'll sound yeah. like Because Queen at the same time, like, the market as well. Yeah. <laughs> they're not market like besar that. gila. So, macam, like, for me, let's say, I don't like Coldplay's new stuff. You know, I'm not a fan. Like, aku suka yang awal-awal semua. Tapi still, market dia still besar sebab ada budak-budak baru dengar. Because the new, market yes. is huge. Betul. Yeah, I think a great example is Radiohead. Every time they have a new album, a portion of their fans go away, but a new portion comes in. Yes. Ah. Yeah. So, Miley Cyrus, yeah. lagu dia ada sebut pasal Radiohead. Good, gila engkau. Tak, to me, right? <laughs> band yang, oh, yeah, kalau yeah. band, right? Yang paling terror sekali lah. If you talk about main, apa mainstream dia band, it's Maroon 5. Yeah. Oh. Look at how pandai <laughs> diorang nak like, stay. Ah, kan? Like, macam... Chameleon. Lirik dia, Animal Smalls. <laughs> 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 macam mana kau boleh jual lirik dia, <laughs> like, Animal Smalls. I mean, look at how clever band tu, macam, okay, they diorang buat segala macam oh, benda yang macam, but they still sound like Maroon 5. Yes. They stay relevant. Cakap, if we sound like, apa, songs apa songs for Jane? Yeah, the yeah awal, album. songs for Jane. Ah, ah, mampus. Mati je. Yeah. You know, it's about staying relevant, but at the same time, they don't lose their, you know. Your target audience is 16 to 24. Yeah. Or uh, slightly lower now, 13 to 24. Yeah. At 25, your audience already gone out of the market because life happens. Yeah. yeah. So you've got to keep on pandering yeah. to the 16 to 24 to go the distance. Yeah. Although there are bands that stick to the same sound, nah, it's okay. You no, got orang-orang tua they, still pergi. They yeah. same sound. I mean, they sound like them, but if you li really listen to the album, they've uh, mm. uh, they've really moved on with yeah. their sound. Yeah. They yeah. play a, they, a lot of importance nowadays is played to the sound design. Yeah. So that is important for bands to understand that you've got you got to move forward with your sound design. Mm. You will still sound like you. Yeah. Kyoto Protocol will still sound like Kyoto Protocol. They sing whatever, they will still sound like that. Or yeah. even Hujan, mm. for example. Hujan is like metal, good. Oh, nah shit, tapi the hip hop. Yeah, see, like, yeah, yeah, uh, like, uh, Havana. I, I, Havana made into... <laughs> Zion plays it all yeah, the time. Yeah. So, yeah. It's about staying relevant. Yes, and is. being creative. The moment, macam, the moment you dah establish who you are, you cannot... That's why I said, my yes. box, treasure chest, will always be empty. But I don't want to be, you know, I need to keep oh. on moving, you know. Sebab the moment aku ada, aku ada ni. Dia pusing you know. balik dia tau. Dia jauh, 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 jauh. Not to answer the question. Tengok jauh terlalu long. Inception, bro. You know. There's a perempuan in the box. <laughs> not a. You will see not this. A. There's a whole bunch of perempuan. Hirams. Okay, so uh, we don't have that much time. So to close the show, I have one more question. And this question is macam tricky sikit. But you may answer it Tricky kalau tak last, panjang lagi kau jawab ni. Sikit-sikit je, panjang ni. Ringkas kan? Ringkas. What is your prediction for the music industry in this 20 decade ni? Prediction atau hope? To me, I never predict. I don't like to predict, I just like to do. So, I don't... To me, it's going to be... It's going to be the same old thing. Bukan same old thing. Same cycle, morphing into like relevance of the times. And but to me, it's just about... For me, uh, on personal apa, punya capacity, I will just keep on doing what I love doing. Lah. So, because I... Because to me, not not to say aku tak peduli, it's just like to me, rather than, I, rather than for me to focus on hoping, I rather focus on doing things that is close to me, which is documenting music. Lah. Faham? And, 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 and I guess for personally, macam, but personal prediction and hope, is is a thin line between it. Mm. So sebab tu aku cakap macam mm. personal prediction. But I, I like your answer. So. Yeah, sebab to me, it's all about doing things. So, what's next? Dah buat ni, okay, what's next? I mean, there are all, to me, kalau nak, I mean, it's, it goes back to you. Kalau kau betul-betul passionate pasal music, kau akan cari jalan. Okay, how, what else can I do? You know, apa lagi, apa lagi. And then, I like the fact that macam, okay, aku dah, dah dapat, aku move on lah. What's next? What's next? It's all about what's next. Discovering, yeah. exploring. Yeah. yeah. Doing whatever, benda, apa-apa benda lah. Doesn't matter. That is me yeah. There's always something to do. Yeah. So... It's true, man. Yeah. yeah to me, macam tu lah. I mean, I, I don't care too much about apa. But to me, I know as long as I do something, I love about whatever that I'm doing. Somehow, some way, maybe 
because I know uh, the niat is like macam, okay, I'm doing this because I love music with the hope that siapa-siapa yang terkam across whatever I do, it will have some impact ke apa benda to them, I'm happy. Yeah. Itu je. So I don't look at changing the world ke, the industry, the scene, whatever. I just want to do something that I like that is close to me. Yeah. Okay, um, I think predict susah sebab there's no science into the prediction or numbers or calculations. But I, I feel that in a way, you telah cakap predict or hope tu kan. So, um, I think that I, that hopefully music, because music banyak kan, it's everywhere. And what it's it's really hard for because because people consume music as just entertainment. What I really hope, what I'm trying to skewer the future to be is like it has to be community based because music can change, trends can change, but community is something that you hold on to forever. It's something that future generations boleh layan, and the and I feel like that's the key thing. Uh, so I think like in a way, I predict that that where it's going to be uh, music is going to be based on communities. And I hope that that the music dah jadi macam anti trend ni macam lagi obscure lagi orang layan. Counter. Tak tahu ah. Ha. Kalau ni prediction berapa tahun ni? Sebelum <laughs> tahun dah kiamat bro. Wah. Wow. <laughs> 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 yeah, tak, tak, tak. yeah, but I I think like I I hope so I, because I think that trend is going to get, you know, terlalu trendy. So maybe it's going to be like anti trend. Benda yang lagi obscure, lagi pelik lagi orang suka in the future because sure, um, do, do you share the same view? A little bit. I think communities will be at the forefront of businesses, not just music. I think, but in going back to your question, actually, actually you can predict. Uh, this world is formulaic. I I believe everything is maths. Um, I predict that in the next 10 years, it, I I can't tell, I can't say how it's going to be divided. Like the first 10 years, the first five years, second five years, I think there will be a huge interest in Southeast Asian music. Oh, yes, agree. Uh, okay. um, because if you look at the music business in general, they've done East Asia, they've done Africa, they've done South America. Southeast Asia, like the tech world, is the last frontier for them. Uh, and I also believe that hyper locality will be an in thing. Yes. People yep. will feel that. Which is a great self-empowering thing because it's empowering who you are, your identity. Although I don't believe identity is a big, should be a big issue. Identity is just an illusion. <laughs> um, but people will feel like, Demi. okay lah, okay lah. Great example without uh, kipas orang banyak sangat is no good. So singing in Kelantan is... No good, is so good. But, so Malaysia lambat sikit in that sense. The uh, rest of Southeast Asia is doing that already. Kita, Malaysia selalu lambat. But kita, kita depan kat bagian lain, belakang kat bagian lain. Yeah. I think... <laughs> I, I think <laughs> benda kita advance. Uh. I think, I, I believe that Malaysia ni kita suka spend... It's that tetarik culture lah, you know. Sit down, talk about problem, go back, sleep. Tomorrow the same thing. So we don't do that much after that. If you look at Indonesia, dude... Oh, ya Allah. The amount of work that put in into their work. That's I'm not so I'm not true. I'm not Indonesia centric. I see that in Singapore and Thailand as well. Uh, the amount of when they do something memang serious lah. Kita macam okay, aku nak jadi musician tapi tiba-tiba a big big brand calls me up and say, "Hey, can you do this photo shoot?" Ah, tiba-tiba aku nak buat photo shoot. You are a musician first, so you should do music, not post Instagram photos. So let your music do your thing lah, but again, going back to the prediction, I think Southeast Asia is a big thing. I agree. That's, that's good. Thank you. Uh, Jen? Uh, I'm going to be like Adli. I'm, I'm, I'm not big into predictions. I'm big into doing. So, and I think it's, it's true. We, we have to do whatever we can, whatever we know best, wherever we stand. If you're a band, do the best that you can. If you're a manager, do the best that you can. If you're a photographer, do the best that you can. Because that's the only way that we can move the scene. Uh, it's... It, I find it a little bit um, difficult for me to compare us with Indonesians because it's all about the money in the end. Because you have to put food on the table in, in the end. And when, when that becomes a reality, as an Indonesian, you've got 248 million people that... Even your niche market is a million listeners. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, right, but you're, also, com you're yeah. also competing against 50 million other singers. But, but that's what pushes you forward, yeah. you see. 
and and that's what makes us who we are is because we don't have that push neither do we have that money in the business to drive the people forward eventually i um my wish my hope would be that people get more educated at what they can what is offered to them in the business because there are there there's so many examples of all of us who have been peddling for so long but we're comfortable thank you very much uh, uh, we're not rich as shit, but Definitely we're comfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They haven't sold your car yet. Yeah. 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 My so, <laughs> so yeah, um, yes, that's my hope that people will educate themselves to to move forward in the business. Thank you so much, and I guess that's uh, all the time we have for today. And uh, hopefully, kita boleh jumpa lagi in the same round time or a different round time somewhere else. We makan apa ni? Ada makan lah. Kamu makan kan tadi? Kita boleh share tau. Tak leh cakap cakap ada makanan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> next time kita ada kue muai no. Bekas. Kamu meeting kau cili kau. Alright. So uh, if you like um, this video, uh, please well you know like and subscribe uh, this channel. Thank you everyone. Bye.